Welcome back to Airbros Review SA. Hopefully you guys had a blast of a 2020 year. Um, I think the whole world was struggling with this COVID-19 that was happening, but hopefully everybody came through it all right. Uh, we did, we really had a good time. We just spent some time with family. Family is number one on our list. And um, yeah, let's hope for the best for 2021. I know we're all gonna have a great year so yeah let's go forward to it first time buyers um, they like the guns they don't know what to buy okay that's totally up to you you guys can do your own homework and research there's plenty of videos on different air guns and it basically goes down to what you like so but the first thing is what i would like to say is when you buy an air gun make sure you buy an air gun with a scope if it needs a scope and so on um, you're gonna know what pellets roundabout you need so it's basically the little basic things that you need to know is just you need to know your pellet weights that you want to shoot at your feet per second and then you go and do your homework to see what gun you want to buy so let's say for argument's sake you bought this gun all right how to look after a normal air gun or a springer gun springer guns do not spray anything inside the barrel it's called dieseling it's not it's going to affect your accuracy some people might say yes it will work but i personally don't think it works i've tried it doesn't work and it stuffs up your air gun or your springer gun with this pcp basic um, maintenance that you can do to it is what we've got is called the ballistol universal gun oil it comes in the spray or in a liquid form in a bottle so the way we use this is after every time you've gone and shot and touched your uh, let's say your aluminium parts or your barrel that is steel your fingers has that type of oil on it that will attract rust to your ferrous metals and non-ferrous metals so what we normally do is after we've gone out for the day of shooting we would take this we would spray the whole gun you can spray your wood you can spray your action and you can spray every everywhere except do not spray deep inside everywhere just the general around everything it lubricates and it protects your um your your woods your metals and it uh, it, it really does a good job so we would normally just spray it down we we'll take a rag we we'll rub off the excess oil and you'll start seeing that how nice and beautiful your gun becomes again you know so even if it was raining spray it afterwards and it will protect it so that means the next time you go out your gun has a protective layer over all the metal parts so that your fingers or water or rain or moisture or whatever comes in contact with it it won't rust as quick as a bare cleaned cylinder or whatever you want to call the parts and mechanisms so just check out for that so basically that will be it on the outside that's it because i mean even if that oil gets in between here by your uh, clocking lever it's going to make it smoother and so on and that's all you need to do nothing else once you start uh, encountering problems like your feet per second has um, gone down you know that it might either be your um, transfer port or your barrel o-ring here in the in the back here it might have been missing because the gun will even be louder at your face it will sound a bit different so that you can replace that that one you guys will be able to find on youtube replacing a barrel o-ring or they call it pellet probe o-ring there's many words for it um, you can search that and they'll show you how to do that on any gun but yeah so you basically will just need a seal pick and some critical skills with your fingers on some of them to get that barrel o-ring in uh, furthermore if we go on to it to clean out your barrel when you get your gun from the factory sometimes some some uh, companies send their guns overseas on the sea meaning it can it's subject to rust so what they normally do is they put a protective layer inside the barrel because it's very it's a raw barrel on the inside um, it doesn't have protective layer over it so they tend to put some lubrication or let's say some protection a rust inhibitor so it will not rust on the inside so some people can shoot it out but we suggest you go get yourself some patchworm field kit it comes in different um, sizes and so on how you would use it and then you get yourself some wads like that that you can pull over it just like this let me show you how it looks 
That's how it will go at the end. You push it through, it's got a sharp corner. Push that right through, you would open it up. Basically, just push it in and then pull it through just to clean it about 10 times or so on. And what I've seen the people don't do is this patch right here on the patch worm, you can pull it through, it's dirty on that side, take it off. You install it the other way and then you can use that same patch with a clean side to it once again. So you've got one patch for two pull throughs, which is quite nice about this. Um, another thing is if you want to clean your barrel, use something like this. Do not use a copper brush. It will ruin your air gun lands in the barrel or your twist rate will become all funky in the inside there because that copper brush might and tend to scratch uh, some deep marks into your lands for your rifling and your accuracy will go down. So if a JSB pellet would go down there, it is a very soft pellet. It will then, then let it, but it will just keep picking up and it will fell your barrel. So do not use that. If you would like to use a brush, use one of these, they're called nylon brushes. And then we've got a ball mop. So you can use either a nylon brush or a ball mop, but once you start using these, and you push it through, you can have a tendency of this to uh, the, the end here yeah, where you screw it on to then scratch your barrel on the inside. That's why we highly recommend the patch worm. Why we're saying so is it will not scratch. You can leave your barrel o-ring in place and you can pull it through and it will not damage anything on the inside here, but yet clean it. So we use Ballistol once again to spray on these uh, little wads. All right, pull it through on the first one just to get some lubrication through and you pull, like I said, 10 through just to clean it. And that's pretty much it. Otherwise, you can get the Robo Solo um, ointment that you can also put on those uh, wads to pull it through. But normally, Ballistol does everything in one. So there's a can in one. So let's say you've got an air gun that you can't pull it through your breech with the patchworm kit and you've got a silencer in the front here that you can't take off. We normally use a straw just to guide that um, gut through it to the end and then you can pull it through, which works quite nice. So that's one, that's another good tip there. And basically it. So that's the cleaning on it. Um, to remove anything and so on, I don't think so. Do not remove it if it's your first gun ever that you've ever bought. Do not remove anything and start trying to upgrade your gun yourself. As why I'm saying so, this gun is charged up to 250 bar. If something goes wrong, this thing might explode or personal body damage or property damage. So please do not do that. Take it to your air gun dealer. They will do whatever you want to do. But first foremost, shoot it and have fun. Do not set anything if you do not know what you're doing. So please do not do that. Um, the other ways of transporting these things, some of them come in nice hard carry cases. This one came in a box. What you need to then do is get yourself a lovely gun bag so that you can transport it and you can store it away when not in use. So you need to make sure that when you have a scope on, the height changes. Don't just look at the gun size, look at the scope when it's on. So it is going to be a little bit higher. So let me go show you the different types of gun bags that we have that you can use. So come, let's go check. So yeah, we've got numerous gun bags and also bow bags. So this gun bag here is a 911 gun bag. So if you look, if you do not put on a scope and you put it in this bag, it will fit perfectly like if it's meant to be. But Put on a scope, it's not going to work. So just look at that. So here is a bullpup bag and you see that size. So when you put on a scope, it will fit in that bag. So make sure that it's got nice padding. You can look at the different colors that you want. There's numerous ones on the market. So make sure that you put it in a bag. So let's go check some more other things. Last but not least, air gun safety, make sure that you have got a proper air gun target to shoot in. Um, do not shoot over other people's walls, over other people or at other people. Make sure when you are ready to fire, your finger should not be always on the trigger, off the trigger when you're ready to fire, then you put it on the trigger and make sure you use your safety correctly. And 
some of the guys that set their triggers make sure when you set your triggers to make sure when it's on safety and you pull the trigger in a safe direction that it doesn't go off because many people will get injured that way once you set the trigger you think it's set to the t it's really not just make sure it will be set to the t if your safety works because we've noticed once you set your trigger and you do not check your your safety if it's working properly or functioning properly it does go off when the safety is on so that is one big concern that we have with the people's safety please make sure you do it the right way point the gun in the right direction and you guys must just have fun if any questions and so on that you guys are stuck with for the first time buyers please info us at pelaguns.com we will get back to your inquiry whatever you need to know and we will help you out or otherwise if you are too scared to work on a gun that is broken or needs to be serviced send it in to us and we'll got our technicians here that will take care of your air gun so have a good one and we'll see you in the next one cheers bye